What's going on, everybody? My name is Brandon. This is Jordan. We are Potty Mouth Sports, your spot for uncensored and unfiltered sports opinions. The day has finally come. We're one day out from the fucking opening night of the 2021-22 NBA season. Been waiting on this all fucking summer, really. And uh, we're back like we never fucking left. I got my attire on, obviously, repping the fucking purple and gold. Yeah, I don't. Um, not sure it's going to be a great year. Perhaps, <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> yeah, I don't think so either, but yeah. we're going to cover all the shits. We're going to cover some <clears throat> some of the offseason moves. Uh, Kyrie Irving is causing up a fucking media shit storm right now. Media is really on his cock big time. Uh, I haven't really heard much of him talk other than what the media takes from, I guess, press conferences and then twists his words into other shit. And then you know what the media fucking does. There was a uh, big fraud case uh, about the healthcare plan in the NBA. We'll talk a little bit about that. Um, and we'll give some predictions for the season coming up. Uh, off season moves. I got to get my phone out. Cause there's a huge fucking list. Everyone went all over the fucking place. Um, yeah, really though. <clears throat> I guess we'll start with the big dogs. Chris Paul resigned with the Phoenix suns. No surprise. Kawhi Leonard re-signed with the Los Angeles Clippers. No surprise. Kyle Lowry got moved in a trade for Goran Dragic uh, right at the beginning of the offseason to the Miami Heat. Um, trade between the Heat and the Raptors. Uh, good move to clear space for the Raps because Goran's on the last year of his contract, I believe. But, I mean, he didn't... Uh, he didn't come with uh, open arms to the Toronto Raptors. I'll just say that. He, he basically of... said, yeah, he doesn't want to be. He doesn't want to be here, basically. It wasn't his first destination no. uh, if he could have picked. And uh, honestly, I don't, I don't even know what to think about this move, man. It's not like – it doesn't look like we're setting up for – playoffs this year. <laughs> no, definitely not. Looks like we're setting up to fucking – take another fucking high pick in the draft but i think so too you did a good pickup with scotty burns in the draft yeah. um i think it's kind of you're in a semi rebuild right now you still have some good pieces but you still need more pieces to compete we'll uh, need that superstar you yeah still have it definitely and it's hard to attract in toronto uh just because of the you know tax bullshit when it comes to canada and the united states getting paid probably and Canadian dollars and then transferring it over to us paying tax income tax in sure. Canada and in the States. <clears throat> um, we got to be playing for more or less the love of the game. If you're coming to Toronto <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and the chance for a chip. So uh, yeah. chips, not chance for the chip isn't there right now. Um, no. And the East, not. a lot of people shit on the East but being like, Oh, the West is so much better. I mean, like, not necessarily. There's still some not fucking, anymore. There's still yeah. some fucking powerhouse teams in the East, and it's really even Steven, in my opinion, right now. Yeah, like it used to be. Yeah, the West was always always better for like the longest time. But yeah, man, no, it's it. Like you said, I think it's pretty even now. And, fucking uh, well, I mean, the East just won the fucking yeah NBA championship. So yeah, and we're gonna talk about some of the health in the nba as well because that needs a big step up this year we can't really see a season like we did last year when all the superstars are going down throughout the throughout the season and i think it kind of contributed to uh, milwaukee bucks phoenix suns uh final i think brooklyn probably would have would have taken the bucks if they were healthy but excuses are excuses stay fucking healthy then if you want to win the chip nope uh, Michael Porter right out of the gate. Michael Porter Jr. Uh, re-signed a fucking five-year deal with the Denver Nuggets for $207 million. Mm -hmm. Pretty nice. Your family set for life. Mm -hmm. um, just kind of scrolling to see who the big dogs are. Uh, we traded Marcus Saul. The Lakers traded Marcus Saul to the Grizzlies. I think he just wanted to retire as a Grizzly, but... Um, let me scroll through here. DeAndre Jordan got moved around a lot 
Like he got signed, he got traded from the Nets to the fucking Pistons to the Lakers. Now he's on the fucking Lakers. The Lakers are. I guess we'll just sum up the Lakers fucking off season. Uh, they are getting shit on because it's a veteran team. They're one of the older teams in the league, but I just that's just experience, dude. Like, in my opinion, we look pretty fucking sexy on paper. Not going to lie. If we can execute, if we can stay healthy, that's the biggest question. But uh, team's looking really fucking good right now. We got Russell Westbrook on a fucking big trade. Uh, We got rid of Kyle Kuzma, Contavious Caldwell Pope, and uh, Montrez Harrell for Russell Westbrook, which was huge. Uh, Yeah, it's, it's Westbrook. I mean, fuck. It's a big, still a big question mark because uh, we don't know how Russell and or Westbrook, Anthony Davis, and LeBron James are all going to mesh together. But the depth on the team is pretty crazy. We got Rajon Rondo back. We got Carmelo Anthony, and he's got his fucking braids in. So that can only mean one thing: dangerous. Uh, DeAndre Jordan switch sides. He's not a Clipper anymore. He's a fucking Laker, purple and gold. We got Dwight Howard back. We also yep. added Kendrick Nunn, Malik Monk, Kent Bazemore. So team's looking pretty good, man. I think we're pretty set up. Uh, we had a good prospect in Matt, Mac McClung. So I'm excited to see if they plug him in at some point this year. Uh, he'll probably play the role that Taylor and Horton Tucker played the last couple seasons. Just kind of the prospect guy. Come in, get the cleanup minutes, and see what you got. Um. Yeah. I think, yes, LaMarcus Aldridge is returning on a one-year deal. Yep. Yeah, he got cleared to play again. That's pretty dope. I mean, yeah, got what, like heart problems or some shit? Yeah, so he had heart problems. They didn't think he was going to play basketball again. It was kind of like a Chris Bosh fucking situation where Chris Bosh had the blood clots and he didn't get cleared to play ever again. And his career got cut short. I think he was like 33, 34 when he had to retire, which was pretty that fucking sucks, sad. Man. He probably saw a couple bronze. years left. Um, Clint Capella re-signed with the Atlanta Hawks two years, 46 million. That's a nice fucking bag for him. Uh, Rajon, yes, Rajon Rondo got bought out by the Grizzlies and then traded to the Lakers. Um, Lori, uh, Lori Markinen signed with the Cleveland Cavaliers four year deal, 67 mil. I mean, that's a, uh, that's a discount rate for the Cavs. I don't really understand what the Cavs are trying to do. Like, Couple a couple seasons ago, they had Drummond, fucking JaVale McGee, Tristan Thompson at the, at one point, I think, until they shipped Tristan to uh, Boston. Maybe Tristan wasn't there, but the, it's like they're and, fucking. Uh, who's the other big guy there? Fucking Larry Nance. Yeah. I mean, Larry he Nance was getting was, minutes too. Yeah. Larry Nance was uh, getting shipped. I think it was because they drafted like uh, Darius Garland and uh, Colin Sexton. So like they're yeah. guard heavy. So they are trying to really lopside on the paint presence as well. But I Cleveland's got to do better at building an all around team. In my opinion, they're just going way too top heavy and then way too bottom heavy. They need that middle. Yeah. They need, they need a good bench like for them to be successful. I still don't think they're going to do anything this year. No. Um, Josh, Josh Richardson signed a, uh, one-year deal with the Boston Celtics. That's a good fucking pickup for the Celtics, in my opinion, as well. Uh, played for the Dallas Mavs last year, uh, took a bit of the strength from the Dallas Mavs and went, t- took it to fucking Boston. Boston's a lot of people, uh, over, overlook the fucking Boston Celtics, but like Danny Ainge, I think, believe, I believe, uh, I believe he stepped down. Uh, whatever role he was in, but I still think he has some <clears throat> say in that organization, but they built a good solid foundation. They still got Marcus smart. They got Jalen Brown, Jason, uh, Jason Tatum. They re-signed fucking Ennis Cantor. Uh, yeah, no. And now they got Josh Richardson. So just another fucking piece to add to the bench, which is pretty good. I don't. Dennis I, Schroeder. Yeah. Dennis Schroeder as well at a fucking discount rate. That guy was, that guy turned down a fucking 80, $80 million deal with the Lakers to sign for 5.9 for one year. Sucks to fucking be you, doesn't it? Clown. Man. But I'm, I'm very glad the, uh, the Lakers got rid of 
got rid of fucking Dennis Schroeder. He was just a fucking yeah. just a head case, and he didn't fit the system at all. I think he he was one of those look good on paper coming from Oklahoma city. He had a really good season in Oklahoma city. They had to give it a try, but it just didn't work out in Los Angeles. So I'm glad they didn't overstay his welcome and got rid of him. That's the good thing about LeBron managing the uh, Los Angeles Lakers. If it doesn't fit, he doesn't waste any fucking time. He can see it doesn't fit and he moves on. Yep. Uh, Terry Rozier signed a four year, $97 million contract with the Hornets to stay in Charlotte, which is pretty good. Uh, Taj Gibson restructured his deal with the Knicks. That's another good piece. Patrick Beverly was another one that got bounced around the league quite a bit. He went from the Clippers to the fucking Clippers to the fucking Grizzlies to the Minnesota Timberwolves. Mm -hmm. I don't like Patrick Beverly whatsoever. (laughs) I don't either. Fuck that guy. They say, oh, he's such a fucking defensive juggernaut. No, he's he's not. He just fucking jumps around and fucking flails his arms around and acts like an idiot. And that does not make you a fucking good defender, man. No. Sorry, but not at all. He's just just an in-your-face person. He doesn't hesitate to say anything to try and throw you off your game. But defense, like, I don't know. That's That's a bit of a stretch, in my opinion. Uh, Marcus Smart re-signed with the Celtics, obviously, four years, 77 mil. Um, Let me scroll through here. Eric Bledsoe went from the fucking – where the fuck was he? A couple years ago. He's been around the last couple seasons. He went from fucking Milwaukee to New Orleans to Memphis. Now he's on the Clippers. So that's that, that was an interesting move. I don't know why the Sacramento Kings picked up an option for Damian Jones. That, like, that's fucking stupid. Uh, Luka Doncic got a fucking bag from the Dallas Mavericks. He fucking signed a five-year, $207 million super max rookie extension is what they're calling As it. he deserves it. <laughs> yes, he does. Get your bag, Luka. One of the best players in the league. And... Yeah. Uh, Locked in for another five with the Dallas Mavericks. Hopefully they can fucking build a team around them. Uh, I don't know if Mark Cuban needs to use his fucking shark tank connections or what in the league, but you got to build a fucking team around that guy. I give Chris Stoppers, I guess one more year to figure his shit out. If he can't, you got to fucking move him or get rid of him. One of the two somehow, some way, even if it's four draft picks, get rid of him. He's just a wasted body on the bench. Um, Agreed. Let me look. Justice Winslow agreed to a deal with the Los Angeles Clippers. So many fucking moves. I'm just kind of scrolling. Lonzo Ball went to the fucking Bulls as well. DeMar DeRozan went to the Bulls. Fucking Alex Caruso went to the Bulls. They're looking fucking sexy right now. <laughs> yeah, they look good. LiAngelo, didn't uh, the Hornets sign him? They, I don't think they ended up signing him. He was oh, do, he was did. doing a training camp in the summer league with uh, the Hornets, and everyone they was fucking really signed intrigued. Him. He's got he's got to get in with one of these organizations, dude. Like some yeah, of these players dude. are fucking. The last shit. name's got to get him in somewhere. <laughs> yeah, like his brother, his brothers are got to pull somehow, some way. And once two lock in, the third's got to request a trade, for sure. Yeah. Like there's no way around it. You. I, I would be excited to see all three of them on the court at the same time at some point, whether that be preseason. I don't yeah. see it happening in the regular season. I just think Leangelo just isn't there yet, talent wise. Lamelo, I think, is going to be the best one out of all of them. Lamelo is just, just disgusting. One rookie just of the talent year last wise, year. yeah. He's going to be nasty. And he's going to step up even more this year. I think Terry, yeah. I think they moved Terry Rozier to the fucking shooting guard. And they'll they'll have hayward at the small forward and that'll that'll be their little unit but i give respect to lonzo the man like there was so much hype around him coming to the league and his dad kind of fucking set him up to be perfect and then he came in and he wasn't but now he's he's starting to turn around man and he's he's playing good ball shooting so. better banging threes got the, respect got, to him yeah got the free throw percentage up he's fucking great on defense uh still has that fucking vision Passing wise, he's yep, he's a good fucking sure. point guard, dude. He is good. He just I think there's a lot of pressure on him, and his dad put a lot of the pressure on him too. 
Like, he had to he had to pave the way for the other brothers to have a chance, in my opinion, make it kind of a media storm. But yeah. I think I like Lamelo made it. Not he didn't even go to the G League or college. He just kind yeah, of yeah, like Lamelo was a given. He was gonna make the fucking NBA. Like yeah. <clears throat> um, Reggie Jackson re-signed with the Clippers, two years, twenty-two mil. <clears throat> Andre Ugudala is ring chasing yet again. He is going back to Golden State to play with the Warriors. Steph and fucking Clay whenever he gets back, and Dre and fucking yeah. James Wiseman, who I'm expecting to fucking have a bigger season this year. He's got to. Hopefully, because man, I had that guy in fantasy last year, and I was just I kept waiting for the like I kept waiting for the fucking force like to come through and. He just didn't have it. He had one fucking like good game, and it was like one, maybe two, three double doubles total throughout the whole season. Yeah. He was injured for a bit, but still, like, got out better than that out of third round pick, I believe it was. I think playing all off season with uh, Steph and Dre is just going to be beneficial to him. I th- I think he'll it'll be a step up for him. I'm not saying he's a superstar by any means. No, but, but I, I think he'll be a solid piece on the team. He's a fucking big boy and he needs to toughen up. Yeah. That's one thing. He's too big to be soft. So hopefully Dre fucking fixed him up there. Yeah. This goes out to a uh, friend of the show, Luke. Uh, Kelly Oubre agreed to a two year, $25 million deal with the Charlotte Hornets. You're going to Charlotte, bud. Holy fuck. You're going to have five or six Ubre j- jerseys by the time that guy's career is done. <laughs> I mean, can't That's really go, up. can't, can't go wrong for the Hornets, really. Like he kind of was a bust last year. He didn't, he didn't play like he played in Phoenix. But uh, I mean, you take a chance on him, of course, because you still yeah. got good pieces in in uh, Hayward, LaMelo Ball, and Terry Rozier. And I think you have Bismack Biombo still, so. Yeah, I believe he's still on the bench for them. They have potential. It's just, what do you do with Ubre? Do you come off the bench? Do you, like, Hayward's up and down health-wise. <laughs> so I can see Ubre starting to come off the bench, still getting good minutes, about 15, 20 a game. And then when Hayward goes down, I think Ubre's presence steps up. Mm-hmm. Um, let me look through Toronto got Ken Birch. Good for you. Yeah, good uh, for us. Fucking whoopee. And uh, Ishmael um, Wainwright. Good job. Fuck. We're going to tear up the league this year, boy. <laughs> Julius like Randall game. signed a uh, four year, $117 million extension with the New York Knicks. Good on him. For some reason, the Philadelphia 76ers re-signed Danny Green to a two-year deal worth $20 million. Uh, I guess defense is worth $10 million a year, eh, boys? Don't that guy get can't what fucking it is shoot. with that fucking guy, man. Like, I say it every single year. I fucking hate that guy. He's a bum. He is uh, He's good defensively. I'll give him that, but that's about it. He, he'll have one game in fucking 10 games where he goes off for – a bunch of threes. He can't fucking miss. But those other nine games, he's a fucking bust on the offensive side. <laughs> Bomb. Yeah. So, um, Spencer Dinwiddie is heading to Washington, signed a three-year deal, a uh, three-year $62 million deal to go hang out with uh, Bradley Beal, fucking Kyle Kuzma, Montrez Harrell. I mean, that team has potential to be better than. It's not bad. Spencer's are, but... a fucking baller, man. That guy's good. Paul Kuzma's a bust. I've been watching him in the fucking preseason. There's been some Kuzma's highlights that are fucking... just brutal. Oh my god, I seen some of them too. I think there was like a meme on some of his fucking plays. There's one where, with the layup where where he double. I think he double dribbles, then travels, travels, then yeah, and then it. air balls a fucking layup all in one fucking sequence. That's the one I saw too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like, brutal. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Get the fuck off the court. <laughs> He's bad, man. He's fucking bad. Why did the Lakers trade fucking Lonzo Ball instead of Kyle Kuzma? I bet they're regretting it now. Yeah. Um, should have let the guy develop, like Lonzo. I mean, a little but, bit. But what are you gonna do? Kyle Kuzma aside, you got Spencer Dinwiddie, you got Bradley Beal, you got Montrez Harrell, and then you got KCP who can come off the bench and drop some fucking threes for you. I mean. Washington will probably be like a ninth, 10 seed for the fucking play in. I'm guessing 
Uh, it depends though, because like Raptors, you never know, yeah, man. Raptors didn't make the playoffs last year. Let me see who we got. I, I guess I don't we think we're to gonna the... make it again this year either. No, we signed know. Gary Trent to like a max extension, and that guy is he's a great player, but he's not a max player. Like no, by any means, not. he's absolutely like, not. You're right. Absolutely not. No, but he's a great player. But <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Victor Oladipo signed a one-year deal with the Heat just to kind of add some fucking depth to that team. But they're going to be good, I think. Yeah, I think the Heat are going to be pretty good, especially if uh, Jimmy and Tyler stay healthy. Yeah. Um, Kemba Walker got bought out by the Oklahoma City Thunder and is heading to New York City. Big, big fucking move as well. I mean, the Knicks just got better. They kept everyone. I believe they still have Derrick Rose coming off the bench too, but now you got Kemba Walker as long yep. as he can stay healthy. Like Kemba, Kemba can fucking ball. Yeah. They got Evan Fournier. Oh, they yeah. Okay. They yeah. got Evan Fournier too. Yeah. And man, they like still have Jules. RJ Barrett. Solid. Uh, I think they still have R- Mitchell Robinson too. I think he was a fucking band-aid last year as well, but Stay. There's another thing. It's going to be stay fucking healthy. That's going to be the fucking motto of this video. And it's probably going to be the title. Stay fucking healthy out there, boys. Come on. Uh, John Collins, five year, $125 million deal with the Atlanta Hawks got re-signed. That's a way to fucking settle that down. Hassan Whiteside might actually see some time off the fucking bench. Uh, yes, he's should. going to Utah. I don't know what Luke Walton was thinking last year, putting like plugging him in for fucking eight minutes a game, sometimes not even playing. Like, what are you doing? You're wasting Doesn't make any talent. Sense. It pissed me off the whole fucking year. The year before that was with Portland. He was fucking balling. He was a double double machine. Yeah, I don't I I don't understand why they did that. And he was on the heat before that, right? Yes, he moved to the yeah, yeah. He was and he, he was good he, on the fucking heat too. Like the kids, he's still young. He's still in his fucking prime, and you're literally wasting his prime away on the bench. Yeah, makes no. Sometimes fucking sense. not even playing. Sometimes not even being a bench player. Yeah, like, yeah. There was nights he would got zero minutes. He just yeah, sat there. I know. He's not a bust. Sad. I'll tell you that much. Absolutely not. <laughs> uh, George Hill. Got uh, acquired by the Oklahoma City Thunder uh, mid-season, I think, last year. Old vet. Uh, Markeith Morris is going to the Heat. Kendrick Nunn went to the Lakers. Talon Horton Tucker got re-signed on a three-year, $32 million deal with the Lakers. Got good death on the Lakers, man. Kendrick Nunn, he's solid pickup. The deal for DeMar DeRozan was three years, 85 mil. Got a bag. Malik Monk. Mm-hmm. I believe is uh, I don't even know. They're not even saying how long his contract is. Mello's on a one year deal. Steph Curry signed a four year, $215 million extension with the golden state warriors nuts, but not a surprise whatsoever. I mean, that's your franchise player. So you keep that guy till he retires. Yep. Uh, Robin Lopez, one year, $5 million deal with the magic. Basically, fucking pennies in the NBA, as sad as that sounds. You're making five mil <laughs> pennies compared to everybody else. Uh, Andre Drummond is going to the Philadelphia 76ers. James Slow. Johnson is going to the Brooklyn Nets. Rodney Hood is uh, staying with Milwaukee. Who the fuck else? We got Rudy Gay going to the Jazz on a two year deal. I fucking see. And that's just in August. Fucking Oklahoma City Thunder, Shea, uh, Gildress Alexander, five years, $172 million contract. Basically locked his ass in. He's going to be their franchise player. They're putting all their fucking stock into him. Mm-hmm. Trey Young, five years, $207 million contract. Uh, rookie maximum extension with uh, the Atlanta Hawks. He deserves it. <laughs> Jamichael Green. Two years, 17 mil with the Denver Nuggets. Blake Griffin is re- has re-signed with the Brooklyn Nets. Norman Powell is staying. Who the fuck is Norman Powell's uh, uh, fucking agent, by the way? 
five years, ninety million dollars to stay with That's Portland. Right. Yeah, really, pretty fucking yeah. nice, bud. I like Norman Powell though. He he balled out on the wraps. He's a good player. Yeah, he's good for like twenty to thirty a game, like on average. Like when he was not a bench player, like when they actually started playing him. Mm-hmm. Fucking good. Uh, Devontae Graham signed with the New Orleans Pelicans for four years, 47 mil. Bobby Portis is staying with the Milwaukee Bucks, two years, $9 million contract. Uh, Cody Zeller, one-year deal with Portland. Uh, I don't – Daniel Thesis, four years, 36 mil with the Houston Rockets. What a waste of fucking money. Alex Caruso, four-year, 37 mil. That was his deal with the Bulls. Uh, Nick Batum is back with the Los Angeles Clippers. Derek Rose, three years, 43 mil with the Knicks. Attaboy, Derek. Still late in his fucking career, and he's got her, bud. Knicks are throwing money out, bud. Four years, 78 mil for uh, Evan Fournier. They got the cash. Trevor, fuck, I totally forgot. Trevor fucking Ariza is back. Purple gold, baby. Let's go. Trevor Ariza. That guy has been fucking relevant. He's been doing. (laughs) That guy hasn't been relevant since like 2009. He's been so bad lately. It's been fucking hard to watch. (laughs) Zach Zach Collins, three uh, three year, $22 million deal with the San Antonio Spurs. Gary Trent, three years, 54 mil. Wow. Talk yeah. about spending money. Oh, that's what I was saying. And then it was announced to Adrian. Uh, uh, it was announced to Woj, Woj and uh, Woj and Rowski or whatever the fuck his name is. Uh, Gary Trent's agent is Rich Paul, so that's why you got the money you got. Um, Boban, uh, Boban, one year deal with the Dallas Mavericks. I wonder if he's going to be in the new John Wick flick. Oh, wait, no, he died in the last one. He died in the third one. I think John Wick fucking hit him with a book and then stabbed him with the fuck. Or I didn't no, see the broke his one. neck with the fucking book. You didn't see that? Not the third. I only seen the first two John Wicks. All right. Well, I spoiled <laughs> for you about opening scene, that fucking Boban guy. He's, He's in the movie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. John Wick's, in a, John Wick's in a fucking library. I totally remember now. John Wick puts a fucking book on the table. And then fucking breaks Boban's neck with it. <laughs> Sorry yeah. to ruin that for you, by the way. Sorry, man. Just don't fuck with John Wick's dog, I guess. <laughs> no. <laughs> note, to, note to self. Uh, Jeff Green, two-year, $10 million <laughs> deal with the Denver Nuggets. Chris Paul, his deal was worth 120 Duncan Robinson, five-year, $90 million extension with the Heat. Uh, Good for him. TJ McConnell, four year, 35 mil with the Pacers. Butler's deal was 184 mil. Mike Conley re signed with Utah, three years, 72 mil. Will Barton, two year, 32 mil. Kelly Olinick, uh, sorry, Will Barton re signed with the Denver Nuggets. Kelly Olinick signed with the Pistons for some reason, three years, 37 mil. I guess that's the only fucking place I was paying him 10 mil a year. Uh, Jared Allen, five years, hundred million dollar contract with the Cavaliers. Fuck, fucking Alec Burke, resigned thirty mil with the uh, Knicks. I mean, that's a lot of money for Alec Burks. He's all right. They were just throwing money away. Eh? The Knicks, like they didn't give a fuck. No, they didn't. Fucking giving everyone some cash. I'm just Jesus Christ. Through here to see, uh... Oh, yeah. Ricky Rubio went to the fucking Cavaliers. Yep. But, but we'll talk about him in a sec. Jonas Valanciunas went to the fucking Pelicans for Steven Adams. That's oh, and Eric Bledsoe. So Eric Bledsoe actually ended up in Memphis. Never mind. So I I fucked that up earlier. Eric Bledsoe is going to uh, Memphis. But Valanciunas is solid, man. I'm not. 
I reamed off quite a bit of fucking deals. If you want to go into depth, those those are the boys that everyone knows. So if you want to go in depth about all the other fucking players and trades and shit that went down, there was a lot of fucking moves. I'm not going to ream them all off, but it was quite a fucking bit. I reamed off quite a bit. So you're welcome for that. Uh, next topic of fucking discussion, Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons, for the longest time, everyone thought he wasn't going to the, uh, he wasn't going to be reporting. Oh, I thought it was set in fucking stone. That guy is never going to be in a 76ers jersey ever again, period. I know. Uh, I thought so, too. I thought he was going to stick to his guns just because of who his agent is, Rich Paul. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And, uh, I mean, Ben could have gotten money other ways. Other players could have helped him get money other ways, <laughs> but. I guess when you're losing 250k a fucking game that you miss or a practice that you miss or whatever, however they're stipulating it, money talks. And uh, boy, did, up. boy, did he get his ass ready? He is ready to go for uh, the season here this week. He, I mean, at the beginning of the or at the end of the year last year, <clears throat> you really got the brunt end of the stick with uh, or the shit end of the stick with fucking the media, his own teammates throwing him under the bus Joel Embiid his coach threw him under the bus Doc Rivers uh I didn't really blame the guy for wanting to leave uh probably a fresh start would have been good but I mean everyone's same- against you how does that make you feel right like going back in the locker room it's probably so fucking awkward yeah really uh I think Joel had to kind of bite his pride and kind of suck up to Ben to fucking bring him back I think it was it's crucial to the 76ers success. Like, yes, the guy can't shoot threes. Yes. His fucking free throw shooting is shaky. Yes. He really lacks confidence. That's a mental thing, but like that shit, he can play ball, man. He's a fucking deep boy candidate every fucking year. He's defensive, all defensive first team. I think the last three fucking seasons, like he's a great fucking point guard, um, especially defensively. He's a great playmaker as well, and he can score in the paint. It's on the team to build his confidence to shoot threes and to shoot free, like be good from the free throw range or free throw line. If that's what they want from him as well. Like if like, you know, his fucking game, you know what you, you got when you fucking drafted him. So like to put all the fucking blame on him is unfair. In my opinion, it's a fucking team sport. Everyone could have talked fucking done better. Joel Embiid could have been more healthy sooner. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, but, no, all bullshit aside, he is a good fucking player. Yeah, no doubt about it. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, imagine he's he's probably working on his shot, man. That's like it's probably like this number one thing in the off season. Like, it has to be. Yeah, like, I mean, it should be. Fuck. But uh, I know Giannis was working on his shot a lot in the offseason. And uh, looks like he's got a little pull-up jumper now in the mid-range. He pulled it up a couple times preseason. It doesn't look too bad. But It's just imagine how lethal these players would be if they had that shot. You don't even have to be a sniper. Just if you have the ability to make that shot or even be confident to throw it up, that's another thing too. So You see how lethal you can be in – and a player like Kevin Durant to be that big and to be able to shoot the ball. It just, it completely, he's one of the best players in the NBA. Like yeah. it just, yeah, it changes everything about, about you if you can shoot and you're that big of a player. <laughs> but I think it'll be a cold start for Philly. Uh, I think it'll be, it'll take a little time to get them back in the motion of doing shit, how they did it last year. Uh, they were the first seed in the East, dude. So what they did worked. It's just the fucking playoffs. They just completely shut down against the Atlanta Hawks. And uh, it was completely unacceptable. I'm not saying it wasn't. Ben Simmons' performance was dreadful, yes. But to put all the blame on him, you, at some point, you got to be a humble teammate and say, you can blame it on me too. I'm on the fucking team. And some of them didn't fucking do that. Pointed the finger right at him. I think there will still be a little leftover drama at the beginning of this season, but I think they'll find their groove and they'll climb up quick um, to be one of those powerhouse teams in the East, especially if they can make a couple moves at the fucking trade deadline. 
it's just Ben Simmons showed his hand, kind of. He doesn't really want to be there. So I don't know if the 76ers see that and give him time to build his trade stock up. And then when the moment they get the trade that they want, ship him. So I'm going to, I'm going to be standing by to see how that all plays out because I wouldn't doubt in my mind that the uh, 76ers trade him at any moment's notice. Mm -hmm. No, I don't either. There you go. You're gone. Yeah. It's like, yeah, the guy doesn't want to come back, but like I said before, you can't really blame him. (laughs) And like everyone, it seems like everyone on the team is like not on your side or just against you. I don't know. Definitely would not give you a good feeling inside. No. So <laughs> if I'm Ben, I do my thing. Wherever I end up, I end up. But I'm going I'm to keep balling. I'm going to keep making this money because he's in for a big bag with the fucking 76ers. A lot of that's probably guaranteed anyway. So fuck him, in my opinion. Just go out there, ball, do your thing. Exactly. That's all you can yeah. do. And then another drama queen in the fucking league, uh, Kyrie Irving. Wherever he goes, the fucking drama is not too far behind him. Whether that be walking off the edge of the earth because it's fucking flat or just, I don't know. You know, he's not a basketball player. He's an artist. Didn't know your fucking paintings went for fucking $35 million a year. Basketball is not a sport. It's an art. (laughs) Yep. Um, But he's back in the news with this whole, uh, he's not allowed to report to any team activities because he's not vaccinated he's kind of taking a stand and then hiding behind the excuse that he's doing it for a greater cause i i I don't know what to think of any of this dude like i don't either man it's one thing after another with you bud like because then he turned around and said he's not uh he's not anti-vax either yeah, like, he's not anti-vax or pro-vax. He's just kind of... He's, he's in between. Yeah, okay. and then he says he hopes to return to the team. Well, you know what you need to do to return to the team. So uh, I understand his skepticism about the vaccine like, and the fact that he thinks this is like a government control thing. In my opinion, like if we're going to fucking call a spade a spade, like, I don't know this whole bullshit. And then all of a sudden we have all these restrictions and rules over a fucking a virus. Nobody really knows how to fucking cure it. And the vaccine doesn't fucking cure it either. It only uh, minimizes the symptoms that you get. Um, But like in Kyrie's position, you've seen like 6 billion people take it. If you don't want to take it, don't take it, dude. But like, if you want to be in the NBA or if you want to play for the Brooklyn, sorry, if you want to play for the Brooklyn Nets, that's what you're going to have to do. It's one of those Mm -hmm. fucking mandate States where you can't play indoors. If you don't have the vax, you know what it is that in California, like request a fucking trade somewhere else. If you want to play your, your money's probably fucking guaranteed anyways. And Kyrie has made a fucking habit of getting paid to do absolutely nothing. Set crisscross applesauce on his fucking Instagram live and shoot the fucking shit with Kevin Durant. So yeah, as, soon, as soon as I heard he, well, when we first heard about it and I thought he'd only be playing half the games, I was just like, well, that's fine. Cause fuck. It's what he likes to do. Anyway, every year he only plays fucking half the season. <laughs> yeah. So fucking that's perfect. That's I mean, Brooklyn fans will be used to that. And now it's kind of backfiring him, fucking spanking his ass. So, yeah, the uh, the owner of the team, Sean Marks, he uh, came down and said, "Yeah, we need full commitment for from every player in this organization." And if you're, I respect the hell of that too. Yeah, me too. So. Like, and if you can't be fully committed to the team, then you can't participate with the team. So, I respect that. It's gonna be interesting to see what happens with this Kyrie drama. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't doubt a trade especially in this climate in the league it's it's an abundance of fucking talent right now so like you, you can go pick up a fucking good guard for Kyrie Irving trust me and probably picks you can even t- you can take a step down with talent and even depth add depth to your fucking team even more to be even more lethal so i mean you already have Kevin Durant and James Harden <laughs> like 
It's two of the most lethal scorers in the fucking NBA. Yeah, scoring's not a fucking issue. Why don't you trade Kyrie and get some fucking defensive players? Maybe a fucking guy who can facilitate as a playmaker. You don't need his, you don't need Kyrie's fucking dribble moves. Yes, he's a great fucking player. He's talented, but is this all worth it in the end? Is this worth $35 million in a roster spot? I don't know. That's the question that the fucking Brooklyn Nets are going to have to ask themselves here soon. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, man, uh, a lot of the fucking media was saying, oh, he's selfish and all that. Like Stephen A saying, oh, he's selfish and all this. And then backpedaling on everything. Oh, well, he's he's not selfish. He's a really great guy. He, he donates to charity. He does a lot of charitable causes. Like Stephen A, just shut the fuck up, man. Honestly, uh, Stephen A on some topics is fucking spot on but talking about Kyrie you're fucking stupid bud <clears throat> yeah the guy doesn't want to get the vaccine he knows the consequences for not getting the vaccine he doesn't have to play that's yeah. what people don't get he can yeah, do whatever the, the fuck the guy he wants. yeah the guy will he's not hurt for money he has <laughs> endorsements like he could never play in the NBA ever again and he would be fine <laughs> yeah so it's his fucking choice, man. And yeah, I there's he doesn't deserve any sympathy, in my opinion. It's his choice. If he doesn't want to play, that's on him. He knows what he needs to do to play. If he's willing to do that, by all means, go play with the Brooklyn Nets. If you don't want to do that, by all means, set out the fucking season. Nobody fucking cares, dude. Like, and that should be the stance on media, but they try and create a fucking story out of anything. And the media is really trying to push this fucking vaccine bullshit. And you can just tell they're trying to villainize people who don't have it. And really who fucking cares if you have the vaccine, what are you so fucking worried about? Yeah. You want to, you want to paint me as a criminal? (laughs) (laughs) Murder. (laughs) Fuck sake, man. Eventually this shit's going to be over. And some people like, we're just going to look at them and be like, holy fuck, bud, you lost your mind. Yeah, a lot of people already have. It's fucked. Yeah. Uh, on to other fucking things. Not to lighten the mood or anything, but a bunch of fucking ex NBA <laughs> players got caught in a fucking healthcare fraud case. They're they're going down. No doubt about it. It's like a four million dollar fraud case. Darius Miles was one of them. Glenn Baby Davis. Uh, trying to think of some other fucking names. Tony Allen. So, some some decent fucking players from back in the day, they were fucking skimming off the fucking top, basically making false claims about dental and healthcare uh, costs. And there's a program in the NBA where the NBA like kind of contributes to those costs or covers those costs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They got fucked because they didn't cover their trail whatsoever. Fucking like, I think 17 of them got arrested and, uh, I highly doubt there's there's probably going to be a couple of them that maybe do some jail time, maybe 30 days or some bullshit like that. But there's going to be some restitution. That four mil is going to get paid. It's probably going to be 10 mil in fines. Like, don't fuck with the NBA, bud. The NBA has better lawyers than you do. Don't understand. Was it real, like some of these were such fucking bullshit, dude. They just think they got away with murder, like thirty seven hundred dollars on dental dental coverage. Like. You really are hurting for thirty seven hundred bucks that much. Yeah, you're fucking. Oh man, I'm I know not, it's I'm not, not a... even hurting for thirty seven hundred that much, and I have never made a million dollars on a fucking NBA contract in my life. No, so. no. Well, since we're talking about like shit like that, I know it's not NBA, but fucking Brett Favre got caught fucking. What was it? He fucking illegally received and spent welfare welfare money, almost a million dollars. And he has to repay it all. Good. Fuck him. Yep. Yeah, he got caught. Fucking fucker. Fucking <laughs> ridiculous, man. I just figured Favre since we were welfare. fucking. Yeah, I figured since we were talking about fucking like fraud and shit, I'd bring that up. I mean, ties are <laughs> I read that the other day. That's fucking ridiculous. Yep. But I don't understand why these people think they can get away with shit like this. Like somebody's going to catch you. Uh, and yeah, you're going to have to pay the fucking pay the cost for it. Um, some of these players, it was no shock, but like Tony Allen, I thought he was a bit better off than that. These guys are all mil- like were millionaires. Obviously, the, the well goes dry when you 
live at a lifestyle that you can't afford for years when you're out of the league and you don't have a job or some shit and you think you're I'm an ex-NBA player I got money in the bank and you just try and live up to this facade that nobody gives a fuck about so um but uh let's give our uh let's give our fucking predictions for the season before we get out of here for the for the first games or I mean, first opening games, night? opening night's crazy. Uh, two, they didn't, uh, they didn't water it down by any means. It's two fucking games, and they're both fucking absolute ridiculousness. We got the uh, Milwaukee Bucks and the Brooklyn Nets facing off. That's gonna be a fucking great game. <laughs> yep. And then, and then we got uh, the Los Angeles Lakers playing the Golden State Warriors, which is gonna be a great game as well. It's gonna be interesting to see how everything works out. Yep. Um, um, yeah. yeah, go ahead. And let us know what you think on opening night. What I think, eh? Well, yeah. um, I obviously Kyrie will most likely not be there. Yeah, he but won't be there. I'm still going to take KD and James Harden to take that game. I think Brooklyn's taking uh, first game of the season. And... The second game of the season, eh? Mm. Well, I already know who uh, my buddy here uh, has taken, so I'll go ahead and take my favorite player, a.k.a. the chef. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, first, I think it's the 8 o'clock game, Milwaukee, Brooklyn. I'm taking Brooklyn. I think Kevin Durant's just going to be ready to go right off the bat. James Harden's going to be ready Same. to go right off the bat. Uh, second game, I'm going to take the Golden State Warriors. I don't think uh, oh! I don't think the Lakers are going to have their shit together just yet. I don't think they're going to be a well-oiled machine. I think it'll take a week or so. We'll probably we got a really easy schedule to begin the season. I think our first uh, there's like I can't remember in the first month or so we have like 15 home games or some shit like that, which is nuts. Shit, so, so pretty crazy. Uh, but yeah, I think it'll take a week or so to uh, figure our shit out. Obviously, we have an easy schedule. Like we play the Cavs, we play the Spurs, shit like that. We should be plugging those games away. But contending games, it's gonna be tough. It all depends on how Russ, AD, and LeBron play together, and then how we can plug in our bench and how the bench executes when some of them aren't on the court. Uh, I also think Frank Vogel shouldn't do. Like they all need to play together at some point in the game, because you need to. Oh yeah. Like just, in a play in a playoff to. spot, Russ isn't gonna sit on the bench while AD and LeBron are doing their thing. Russ is coming. Russ is gonna be on the fucking court. Fucking right, he is. So uh, absolutely. Starting five is gonna be just insane, insanity, just nuts. Like, I don't think they'll stack it. I think Ken Bazemore will play the fucking uh, shooting guard, but. In my opinion, the way it should roll for like a power house starting five, we have Russ at the point guard. We have LeBron at the shooting guard. We have Carmelo Anthony at the small forward. We have Anthony Davis at the fucking power forward. And then we got Dwight Howard. It's nasty. So absolutely like, nasty. That's an um, all-star fucking <laughs> all-star caliber yeah, starting fucking, lineup. For game one, too, there's no there won't be any clay for a bit. So all you guys really got to do too is minimize Steph, I feel, in that yeah, game. Yeah, and that's easier said than done. So it's very easier um, said than done, but you guys got the defensive squad to do it. Yeah, uh, we do. You're right. Um, even if it means double teaming that little fucker, love him, my guy. Um, because he he can even being double teamed, that guy can just light the fucking lamp. I so. I, I think Steph <laughs> drops forty tom- on tomorrow night. So I would love to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think he drops 40. I think AD has a double double. Um, I think LeBron is gonna be a facilitator out there. I think it'll take Russ a little bit to get used to the system. And per- Mello probably has like 10 or 15 off the bench, but yeah, he's um, usually good for that. Uh yeah, but let's get predictions for the rest of the season. How do you just quick quick shit? How do you think uh who do you see in the NBA finals this year on paper? <laughs> uh on paper, if it's if everyone's staying healthy, I'm taking should be the Brooklyn Nets. I'm gonna 
say. And mm-hmm. that's if Kyrie Irving, like the whole team's there, like no fucking health issues, no fucking COVID contract bullshit issues. Yeah, I'm I'm saying Brooklyn for the East and for the West. Fuck, man. Like, I see Utah being a problem again. If the Lakers can fucking play as good as they look on paper, I can see them going to the chip. Mm. <clears throat> I'm uh, I'm gonna pick probably pick Milwaukee and the Lakers to go in. I think like Milwaukee's just an overall like they've got they, they a definitely whole fucking depth. unit. Yeah. Bro- Brooklyn's got like uh, Brooklyn's got, got the, a couple they snipers got the starting and five fucking firepower. Yeah, yeah, and that's really it. Uh, it's gonna be interesting to see though, man. There's so many teams that are fucking good. Like, let me look yeah. here. Absolutely. Knicks should make the playoffs. 76ers should make the playoffs. Celtics should make the playoffs. And the Nets should make the playoffs. The Bulls should make the playoffs. Bucks Heat, should make I don't the know playoffs. If you said them. Heat, Hawks. And that is probably about it. How many teams is that? Two, four. Yeah, that's eight. So, and then probably the two play in teams will be Charlotte Hornets again. And probably the. Wizards or the Indiana Pacers? I was going to say the Wizards. And then in the West, Utah Jazz will be in the playoffs. Denver Nuggets will be in the playoffs. Warriors, Clippers, Lakers, Suns. So there are six. And then the Dallas Mavericks. Probably. Yes. And I'll even throw I'll, I'll throw Portland in there. And then in the uh, play-in tournament, well, the ninth and tenth seeds. I'll put the Grizzlies in and the Oklahoma City Thunder. I think uh, Shea Gildress Alexander is just going to be nuts this year. I think yeah, he's I, a solid. He's a good player. I, like I, I think he Canadian. makes a big step up, and I think they're starting to make moves on that team. They have the draft capital to move players around if they need to midseason or whatever. I, I think they hang on and then. I think they hang on to a ninth or tenth seed this year. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Spurs. I don't really. Spurs could be there too, but Pel- Pelicans. I don't see doing well. Zion's out for quite some time. They have Brandon Ingram and Josh Hart, and that's they have the leftover fucking Los Angeles Lakers. They got rid of Eric Bledsoe. Uh, they got Jonas Valanciunas, I guess, but no. he's solid actually. He's good, yeah. but the thing is, your star is Zion. I mean, as good of a player he is, he's a fucking band-aid, man. And I feel like he's going to have injury problems for his whole career, just yeah. looking at him now. But yeah. hopefully not. Hopefully not. And uh, I guess that brings us back full circle to what we've been saying this whole time, and we're going to end with this. Everybody needs to stay healthy this year. I don't want to see a fucking season like we did last year where, you know, I don't watch for 20 or 30 games because my fucking star players are out with a fucking bruised thumb get the fuck back out there play the fucking game man like that's what you're getting paid all this money to fucking do fans are in the stands again and like it's a packed house in the yeah, majority the of the arenas their favorite players and it's not the fucking bench players of the team let me tell you yeah you had your time off you once in a fucking nba career did you have four or five months off before playing the playoffs in the bubble. You had tons of time to fucking relax, stay with your family, spend that fucking money, however you fucking please. Um, But yeah, no, it's time to get back to work. It's time to stay healthy. Uh, And yeah, I'm, I'm fucking pumped for this season, dude. I think it's going to be a lot better than it was last year. I think it's going to be way more competitive than it was last year. I think the injuries, I think, I think everyone's, for the most part, it's going to stay healthy. There's going to be a few guys that are going to go down with bullshit injuries. I, I can already fucking see Anthony Davis going going down with a fucking bruised shin. Yeah, he got kicked stupid. in the fucking shin, and he's out for fucking four games. Like, it's just stupid shit like that. I can already see that happening, but I'm excited. I love basketball, and uh, the season's back. Yeah. 
I don't see my boys, aka the Raptors, doing too fucking good this year. I don't see it either. Uh, I have a feeling it's going to be just another go for the fucking highest pick in the draft, like I said, mm-hmm. kind of year. Um, might have to just fucking root for my boy stuff this year, you know? Like, <laughs> you might have to, eh? Fuck, well, I mean, he's actually exciting to watch, and mm-hmm. no one on the Raptors is really exciting to watch anymore, uh, sad as it is. If I were to pick a team to get that pick, that first round pe- or first overall pick from you, it's probably going to be either the Minnesota Timberwolves or the Orlando Magic over the Raptors. I think the Raptors are still going to win some games. I think they'll probably yeah. end up 11th or 12th seed in the East, but. Yeah, I can see that. Just miss. I can see it's just missing the play in tournament. I mean, they still got Pascal. They still got OG Ananobi. They still have Freddy. Nick Nurse as their fucking coach. They still got have Van Freddy. Vliet. Yep. Like they still have some pieces. It's just, yeah, you need that fucking guy who says Gary yeah. Trent Jr. <laughs> Sweet. But uh yeah, man. This has uh, been episode 29 of Zooming with the boys, I think. Hold on, let me look. I need yeah, to be a... baseball is 28. Yeah, 29 of Zooming with the boys. Um NBA is back, baby. We're back tomorrow. Can't wait. I'll be tuning in to see who wins between the Lakes and the fucking uh, Warriors. Maybe I'll tune into the fucking Bucks and Nets game just because I'm pumped. (laughs) (laughs) That's that's fucking ridiculous. But uh, yeah, NBA season is back, so we're going to be covering it probably every month or so. We'll just give a recap of what's gone down, kind of like what we did with the MLB um fantasy draft video we done our fantasy draft for nba so we're going to be putting that video out on thursday yeah thursday we're going to be putting that video out on thursday so tune in and see the results of our fantasy draft and link in the bio hit us up on instagram and twitter stay up to date with what we're doing uh, let us know in the comments below what you think is going to go down in the NBA season this year. A lot of fucking action, a lot of teams that have a lot of fucking pieces. And uh, I think, I think it's kind of more well-balanced than it was fucking three, four years ago talent wise. So um, yeah, let us know in the comments below what you think, who you're picking to take, uh, take the fucking NBA finals this year. And this has been uh, Brandon and Jordan. We're going to be covering the fucking NBA all season. We might bring some uh, some special guests in here and there. And like always, we're out. Goodbye, bitches.